Well, if you want to be a lucky winner of one of these Louisville ladders, drop a comment on me because we're going to choose one lucky winner from the first hundred comments on my page. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today we're going to cover something pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to cut crown molding right side up rather than with the crown stops upside down and backwards. Now a lot of crown moldings are either 45-45, meaning it comes with a 45 degree angle and, and a 45 degree angle here, bevel. So when you put it up on the wall, the spring angle is actually 45-45. This is the way it sits. Some crown moldings come 38-52, meaning this might be 38 and this might be a 52, the, the angle. If you add those both together, you get a 90 degree corner, okay? So it will sit on your corner either this way or a little bit on an angle, different ways. But when you go to make that crown cut on your saw, unless you cut it upside down and backwards, you have to know what that spring angle is. With this tool, you don't have to know what it is, and it doesn't matter what the spring angle is, it's gonna work. Let's get started on it. This is what I'm talking about when I say it's a simple piece to make, and all you need is scraps. This is a half inch piece of plywood. I cut it at four and three quarter inches wide, okay? It's 18 inches long. You can make it a little longer, you can make it shorter. Really doesn't matter, whatever's comfortable for you. Now, this is 18 inches by four and three quarters. This piece right here is four inches, okay? Because I'm using six and a quarter inch crown for my biggest piece of crown. Now, if you have a larger piece of crown, you'll make this one a little bit bigger. Not a big deal. I can make, you can make this adjustable if you want with some slots. I made one where I just slid it up and down with slots, but I'm trying to make it really simple for you. I'm aware ear protection. I got it set at 18 inches and you can make, uh, if you have a piece of scrap wood that's 12 inches, you can make it 12 inches, it's gonna work fine. I like 18 inches because it gives me a little bit more stability on there. But like I said, if you have scrap pieces that are smaller, don't worry about it, make it out of that. My three quarter inch piece needs to be four inches wide, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip this four inches wide first and then I'll get my 18 inches across. So we we'll set this up at four inches. Raise my blade up just a little bit. I'll use a push stick for this. I'm gonna lower my blade a little bit. I don't want it sticking up too high. Just above my workpiece. And we'll cut this one. Notice when I'm cutting this, I take one hand and I hold it down here against this fence tight. I'll push it with this hand. When it gets closer to the blade, I use my push stick and I finish it off because you don't want your fingers next to that blade. Okay, I'm gonna take my fence and cut a hole out of here or a notch. Now on this one I have two notches, one on each side. I find that one in the center will probably work better for me so I can slide it back and forth and have a good grip from the center. So I'm gonna just lock this down on my works table because I have uh, clamps right here. I'll get a measurement and go from the center. I'm using my Rockwell 20 volt drill. This drill and battery has a 20 year warranty when you buy it. Free replacement on the battery for 20 years and they'll fix the drill for 20 years. And it's a pretty darn powerful drill. I really like it a lot. So we'll get started on this and I'm also using a mandrel. Both of these will be in the description box. This fast cap mandrel is the best mandrel I've ever used. All you do is take your hole saw, push it down, and turn it one quarter turn to the left. Once you do that, it locks in place and it stays there. I want to set it as close as possible to the edge because I want the widest part. I don't want it to come down and be too narrow right here. I may trim it up later, but if it's, if it's good, I'll be fine with it. I'm close to the edge right now. There you go. Now watch how easy this is to remove. I just turn this, it pops out, and that's it. I'm gonna use my proscribe tape. This is one of my inventions. I'm gonna take this and mark my line at two and a half inches right here.
Now I'll take a drill bit. It doesn't matter which size you have, you just want it bigger than the head of this. If you have a countersink bit, use that. All you want to do is get deep enough to where the head sits down in there and it's flush. That's all you're doing. Try to get it in the center. This is why I use three quarter inch plywood on the sides because you can screw into that. If you use MDF or something like that, you may split it. Or if you use thinner plywood or regular wood, you could split it. You're not going to split three quarter inch plywood. It's going to go in there and bite. If you have a nail gun, you can tack it in place with that. If you don't, you can use uh, CA glue or anything to hold it in place and then come back and drill it. Or you can clamp it. Just put a clamp on there and do that. But what I'm going to do is use my nail gun, line it up right on the end and just put a couple of tacks in it. That way it holds it in place for when I go back and screw it, I know it's going to be exact. So I'll put it right on it. Now I can come back and run my screws in here. I'm using two inch screws. You can use inch and a quarter, it doesn't matter, inch and a half. If you use a two inch screw, make sure that it's directly in the center and you're going straight because you don't want to come out the sides of that. I have an inch and a quarter screw, that's what, that'll be fine. I'm going to put that right here because it would come out here if I had it too long. We're going to take our one inch strip and we're going to cut that. So I can just set it right here. I don't even have to worry about measuring it. Get it right on here flush. And mark it off. You want the lip to hang over the two and a half inch side because that's the side that's going to take the larger crown and you'll see what I'm talking about a little later. So let's set it in place, pop a few nails in it. Now when you do this, if you don't have a nail gun, go ahead and glue it or screw it down. Either one's going to work. All right, perfect. Well here you go. This is the entire system right here. My one piece, which is made from three boards, and then I had this ripped off from when I, uh, it was the full length, the one inch strip. I use this when I'm cutting smaller crown and you'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes. The reason why it has the lip going toward the wide side is because it's specifically made for my largest crown. All the smaller crowns, I'll use this piece where I can slide it up and down and clamp it and keep the crown in position with this little clamp. So let's go ahead and test this baby out. If you have a larger piece of crown, you can make one to fit that. All you would do is get the measurement when this is sitting flat right here to the top part of here and that's the height you want to go with this, the total height. This one right here is a 45-45 spring angle. This one is a 38-52, meaning one side is 38 and the other is 52. If you look at it, you can see the angles different right here than here. I'm going to start off with the large piece of crown which is six and a quarter inches and of course that's going to go on the wide side of this. We're going to make a simple return. Just remember when I set it on here, the right side right here is the right side on my saw so there's no confusion. I take this part, I slide it back and I put this under. Once this locks straight here where it's flush and it's flush here, I'm perfect. Now I cut a 45 on this on the two sides because that enables me to get the saw blade closer. So we're going to go ahead and make an outside cut because this is going to be a return. It's just that simple. Now we will take and slide it over this way and I'm going to make a small return. So let's go ahead and cut this piece off right here. I'm going to set this on the side and make two other cuts for my return. And you can see this is flush right against the end. I'll bring it back to where it lines up with my saw right. Then to cut a return, 
I want to take it right on that edge, right here. I'm going to cut it flat. And that enables me to get a good return on it. So we'll pull this over. Now to make this cut, you'll see the blade's going to go right on that edge. You don't want to have any of this white showing, you want it right on that line. I'm using my fast cap 2P10 glue with the activator, so I'll take the activator and spray it on one side, and I'll take the glue on the opposite side. And that's how it's going to sit on there. So we'll take, put my glue right here. I'm using the thick glue. You have gel, thick, all the way to thin, whatever one you want. We'll take a square and set it right on this edge, and you can see just how accurate it is. It's going to work the same way. I'm going to make an inside cut with this. But what I'm going to do, set it down on the saw and make sure that this is flush right here with my fence. Once it's flush, I take my bar and I'll slide it over here on top of it. Make sure that you keep this flush right there against the edge. Then I can take my clamp and slide it on. and tighten it down. Once this is tight, everything's locked in place. I can slide my piece back and forth and put another piece on here anytime. So I can take this and remove it or put it back on there and slide it. This is two and five eighths inch crown, real small. But if you notice, it is not going to touch the, the base right here. It's going to sit on the plywood because it's so small, but it's still going to work perfectly. All you have to do is make sure it's lined up with the fence. If it's lined up with this fence, it's going to hold it against there perfectly and you can make your cuts the same way. Well there you have it. This is the perfect tool, the perfect jig for a do-it-yourselfer. And it's great for a lot of you guys who are in the field. I am a huge tool buff, but I normally don't get too excited over ladders. But let me tell you something, Louisville has earned its bragging rights with this one. This is a cross step by Louisville. And let me show you a few of the features that really caught my attention. Right here, you have a rubber bumper on the front of this. So I can set this on the wall without damaging it. Okay, that's a nice little feature, but that's not the key feature. This V design right here is incredible. This will allow you to get into inside corners, wrap around outside corners without causing any damage on your walls or anything. Set this right on the pipe and it's not going to wobble. It's going to grab on there really well. I put it on this outside corner of my house and I don't have to worry about any damage at all and it distributes the pressure across the wall so it's not all on this corner. I don't even have to worry about this messing my walls up and I'm very careful with my walls, believe me. You can see in my other videos I custom built these cabinets myself so I wouldn't do anything to jeopardize them. Now I would never take a normal ladder and set on my cabinets like this because you're definitely going to mess up the corner or scuff them. This is not causing any damage at all because it's cradling my cabinet. Now I can get right on it when I go to put my crown molding on or paint it and I don't have to worry about any damage at all. Look at the pressure that's on this door. I can still open it up because the pressure is being distributed around this thing and it's not pushing all the way on here so I don't have to worry about even damaging my hinges. Now if I want to go from the outside to the inside corner and work on this 
and I need to get right up in that corner, all I have to do is take my ladder, move it over, and set it on these two edges. No other ladder is going to do this. Now I can take this and get right in here. If that doesn't impress you, nothing will. Let's take a standard ladder and get as high as I can. There's no way I could work off of this. You start losing your balance because you're way over. Look how far away I am from the cabinets. With the Louisville ladder, I'm right up on it. I don't even have to hardly lean. This is great because I could work all of this, put my crown molding in all around the cabinets, and I have my countertops in place. Louisville ladders can be ordered directly from HomeDepot.com and delivered to a store near you. No charge for shipping. Well, if you want to be a lucky winner of one of these Louisville ladders, drop a comment on me because we're going to choose one lucky winner from the first hundred comments on my page. Now, you have to be a subscriber to do this because we need a way to get back in touch with you. Hit like if you found this useful. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos, and I will see you guys on the next project.